Hi, I'm Mr. Slunky Bix and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be working on the subfloor of our Chevy Shorty family van. Prior to the subfloor being started, we installed some compartments into the floor area. This one under the step well here is for our shoes and anything else we might need to put there. There was a lot of space under these vans, and we decided to add as much storage as possible. This one here is for some extra batteries. And this one over here is for our one liter oil jugs. We went and picked up the wood for the sub floor, sub box, and bench seat. We got five sheets of half inch uh, aspen and one sheet of three quarter inch MDF. The first step in our subfloor installation is the vibration dampening material. We're using the kill mat 50 mil and we have the floor and the doors to do, but we're on our fourth box right now. We have six boxes, so we're hoping that 300 square feet should do it. The walls and roof had been done earlier, but the 300 square feet would be the total for the entire van. We've tried various brands of butyl vibration dampening material in the past, but Killmat gives great performance and is actually one of the most affordable out there. Yeah, this step is a must for anyone wanting their van to be a quiet sanctuary. So the kill mat is all laid down and it makes a noticeable difference. The next step is the underlay. So we could use this five millimeter closed cell foam, which is the same as the 10 millimeter stuff on the wall, but it makes more sense to save this for the engine compartment. So we're going to use this Acoustitec 5000, which should provide thermal and acoustic insulation, but we will have to use contact cement to lay it. So that means that the first step in laying this down is apply contact cement to both surfaces and then allow that to thoroughly dry. And then I can carefully lay down the membrane over top of the kill mat. It's, it's a smelly job, but it's definitely worth it. Very uh, rewarding and, well, very, very satisfying. So here's a good spot to show you exactly how we put it in. See, we have the piece cut out with the creases cut so that we can fold it on. And then we apply contact cement to both the membrane and the kill mat. And then we lay it down and it sticks. We just let it sit. It's very tedious, but definitely worth it. So here's the uh, Acoustitec 5000 membrane all laid down. And this took way longer than we thought it would. 
this was a lot of uh, work. All in all, this membrane alone took about eight hours to do. Each one of these wheel wells was about an hour worth of work. And we even did the uh, inside the bucket over here. The area we are expecting the most difference in is uh, in the front part of the cab where you are really close to the road wheels. So any extra uh, insulation and acoustic dampening is good there. So with the membrane and with the kill mat uh, together, it should make it much, much quieter. So we're about to lay down the rubber, but first I wanted to talk about these compartments in the floor. This one here was made to fit three Optima deep cycle batteries. It was essentially the same amount of work to make a compartment to fit one battery as it was to fit three. Over here we have this one, which is made to fit three liters of engine fluids. As you can see, they fit snugly, but not too tight. All right, now it's time to roll out this rubber. So as you can see, the uh, rubber flooring only goes for the first two thirds of the van. The rubber flooring actually came out of a 1978 Chevy Caravan that we uh, got from a local paint rep. And he, uh, he gave us the van to get parts that we needed, anything we needed before we scrap it. We ended up selling it to another enthusiast, however we uh, did take a lot of parts off of it, including the rubber floor. It was a uh, 1978 Caravan, which was the uh, competitor to the Dodge Street Van in those years. So it had the wood paneling, which we've uh, used right now for the headliner. We have the sidewalls as well, and we've kept that. For uh, future templating, so we'll uh, get to that in another video. But the caravan came with the carpet in the front and rubber in the back, so we're going to be using the rubber in the back for uh, for the mass loaded vinyl substitute. We also have the rubber coverings for the wheel wells. However, we don't want to be installing that until after the plywood is in. The floor, rubber flooring is not even going to be laid down with any kind of adhesive or fasteners because when we screw down the plywood later, it's going to be going right through the rubber flooring and holding it in place with, with those fasteners. So right now, we don't want to actually put anything in. In fact, we don't even want to because uh, we're going to be using the rubber uh, mat for a template for the plywood that will go on top of it. So we're gonna roll this back up and transfer it onto the uh, wood. Now we've got the first template made up. These cardboard pieces on the ends are so that we can get the template to fit into the parts where the rubber doesn't. Now it should fit pretty good in the van and we've just got to trace it onto the wood. Now the template's traced onto the wood and we're ready to cut.
I'm just going to round the edges so that the carpet and underlay have a smoother transition. Refinished the first piece of wood and it turned out really well. It fits into the crevices of the corners very well too. Now we're ready to start templating for the next piece of wood but this rubber mat isn't going to work for us. So what we're going to have to do is use this piece of cardboard. It's a 4x8 sheet and it turns out a lot of people don't know this but when you're buying wood from a place like home depot there is a piece of cardboard at the bottom of the plywood and uh it's to make it so that it doesn't get damaged during transport and it turns out home depot doesn't mind if you take it when you're buying all the plywood now we've got the template made we have a quarter inch gap around the entire perimeter and over here we have a half inch overhang to roll the carpet over to create a hidden edge. Just wanted to give you a quick update on this template here. It was pretty complicated to make, but it appears that the floor is flat from here forward. Uh, we're hoping that it truly is that way because it would be nice to have the thermal and acoustic uh, insulating from the additional plywood. Do you think this is going to work? Leave a comment down below. Let's find out together. Now the last pieces are cut and we've rounded the edges where needed and it fits very well. We have them going as far forward as possible, which is nice to know. It should make a big difference in the sound and heat. I just wanted to point out that now is a great time to check your floor plan and make sure that everything fits and check your measurements and adjust them if need be. And if you're enjoying this video, please leave a like. It's greatly appreciated. This is all the wood ready to go. And now it's time to put it in and screw it down. Each piece of tape represents uh, the top of a rib in the van. Now we've done a dot at every six inches along the pieces of tape. So the rubber is in for the final time as well. And we haven't cut out the rubber for the battery tray yet because we are gonna do that later and use the rubber that we cut out for the bottom of the battery tray. Now we need to drill all the holes. We're doing every second one in a grid pattern. And some areas need a little bit more. So they're getting every hole drilled. And some areas, of course, need not as much or none because there's an obstruction that we do not want to hit. So now we need to countersink the holes so that the uh, screws will fit flush with the floor. And now we get to screw it down and, well, make all the screws flush with the floor. Now, believe me when I say this, there are a lot of screws holding this down. So, it shouldn't make any extra squeaks or noises, and it should be very secure for mounting furniture onto it.
we've got it all screwed down now and it took about 200 screws but it should be pretty solid this front section here is at an angle so it doesn't meet up perfectly with this middle section so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some caulking and we're gonna put it in the seam and then smooth it with a trowel now my dad and I we got to talking and we want this to be waterproofed just in case we have a uh, large spill or we have to steam clean it so we have this swimming pool paint from a previous job that we're gonna put down just for a extra layer of protection we've got the uh, seam laid down the caulkings laid down and we've tooled it out and we also started painting from the front uh, we've gotten to the seam now and uh, we're just heading to the back. Now this brings us to the end of our subfloor installation. If you enjoyed this video, then leave a comment down below because we're about to start on our furniture and cabinetry in this van. So I'd wanna know if you wanted to see that or not. Uh, but before we end this video, I wanna do a quick breakdown of what this took to make. The kill mat at the bottom of this took about $125. Um, and above that there was the Acoustitech 5000 which took about $350 but then there was also the glue on top of that with $100 worth of glue to put it down. The rubber mat we got for free out of that caravan that I mentioned before. The plywood and screws took about $200 and the Insulex paint took about $50. Uh, we had some left over, and in total that was about $200 for the gallon, but we only used about a quart. Now that brings our total up to $825 Canadian. Now in time, the kill mat took about three hours. Uh, it was about eight hours for the Acoustitech membrane. The wood took about 12 hours and the painting took about an hour, bringing the total of the subfloor to 24 hours but the uh, three in-floor compartments took about 20 hours, give or take a few, bringing our total up to 44 hours. Well, this was a fun adventure. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.